Good morning, guys. Good morning. This is Abertina Nayanti. Welcome, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a family life and relationship coach. Uh, my passion is to rebuild, establish, and restore broken relationships using kingdom principles. So if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, you can go and hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell thing, and you're going to be notified whenever there's a new video is loaded. All right? Facebook, uh, welcome. This is my group. It's this, I'm doing this video in my uh, on my fan page, Kingdom Relationship Network, and um, it's kind of blurry a little bit. I don't know what's going on, but you know, yeah. So I come on every Wednesday. Um, we pray for our family, pray for our children, pray for our marriages, and then I come on Sunday with relationship uh, messages. But, you know, as the Lord leads during the course of the week, I come in with, you know, short messages, you know, maybe when I'm doing my Bible study, and then the Holy Spirit will lead me in, uh, lead me to a message. And then, you know, I'll come in and, um, and do a quick video. So, like, today, uh, I was studying, you know, actually yesterday morning, I was studying the book of my, uh, Acts, and um, I got a word from there, a word of encouragement for, um, you know, for somebody who's going to be, who's going to need that encouragement because we all need encouragement nowadays. So let's just get into the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I bring this meeting before you this morning. I pray that you speak to me, oh God, crucify my flesh. You speak to me, Lord Jesus, shut my mouth and you speak. I'm just a vessel that I've been used. Holy Spirit, I pray that you take control of this section and I pray that you bless the heart of people that they may uh, be encouraged to do what you have called them to do in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, I was studying the book of uh, Acts, and then, you know, I started to read about uh, uh, Stephen, you know, and Peter and everything that they were doing, you know, during the early church. It was, that was so amazing. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, and um, I got a word. I got a word from, from from there and then the Lord took me to he took me to uh, John. He took me back to the book of John and then the book of Matthew. You know, that's how he gives you, you know, a way you get a message and then he would lead you to other scriptures that would that he would combine and then you could come up with a message to encourage people. So, you know, a lot of things go on in this world, you know, um the devil he used people, he used your own relatives, he used your spouse. He used close friends, you know, to try to discourage you whenever you are doing something good. You know, he tried to criticize you. He tried to make you feel that you're not doing the right thing. And we are all humans. We are in the flesh. Sometimes you know that you're doing the right thing. You are impacting life. But then that one person will come and say something wrong to you that you're not doing the right thing. The devil will play that in your mind. And then you start, you start to feel discouraged. You know, but then you go, what you do is you go to the Lord in prayer and ask God, God, is, is this one thing this person is saying? Is this, is this true? Or I'm doing the right thing or I'm on the, or I'm, I'm on the right path? Because you call me. You know, that's how I do. When somebody comes and tells me that I'm not doing the right thing, I go to God and say, you call me. All right? You call me, Lord. So you show me, reveal to me if I'm doing the wrong thing. And he will just come to me and tell me, say, it's, this is distraction. Just keep doing what you're doing. All right? So I was encouraged. So that's why I want. I came on this morning to encourage um, somebody who is going through contentment, who is going through criticism from people, who is who you know who going through some trial time in the um, in the uh, uh, ministry. All right. So Acts chapter seven, sorry, Acts chapter six, verse um, uh, eight to fifteen. It says, "Stephen is a well, Stephen, a man full of God's grace." Power perform of God's grace and power. Perform amazing miracles and sign and one sorry. Amazing miracles and signs among uh, amazing miracles and signs among people. But one day some men from the synagogue of the free slaves, as it was called, started to debate with him. There were Jews and Syrian, Alexandria, Celia, and the province of Asia. None of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit with 
which Stephen spoke. So they persuaded some men to lie about Stephen, saying, We heard him blaspheme uh, uh, Moses and even God. This roused the people and elders and the teachers of religion, religious law. So they arrested Stephen and brought him before the high council. They went and gathered around and lied because they couldn't stand the miracles that Stephen was performing. They couldn't stand the things that he was doing for God. You know, he was making impact. The eyes were coming. You know, the, the, those days, the, the, the disciples, they were praying. They were always praying, fasting, you know, so they were doing great things. The people were coming to Christ, you know, so they couldn't stand it. The, the enemy, the devil couldn't stand it, so he had to go through those people. He had to go through those people to lie, to lie on Stephen, you know, so they brought him before the court. So the lying witness said, this man is always speaking against the holy temple and against Moses. And against Moses. Thanks for joining, Julia. <laughs> and against Moses. We have heard him, we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy the temple and change and change the custom most uh, change the customs most and hand that down to us. At this point, they you know they started lying. They started lying that you know he said he, he talking about this Jesus Nazareth who said that he's going to change the temple and build it in or uh, 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 you know break it down and build it in three days. Started so making it to sound so bad that like what he was saying was wrong that he never heard it before. So at that point, what came to me in the scripture was at that point, when everyone in the high council saw at Stephen because his face became bright like an angel. Oh my God, they were so profound when I read it. They were lying on him. They were criticizing his work. They were doing all, they were saying all kinds of things about him. And God just brightened his face. His face became so bright as an angel. Because God was pleased with what he was doing. And he was different amongst them. So I just want to encourage you. If somebody is lying on you, criticizing you, trying to persecute you, just know that God is backing you. Just know that whatever you're doing, if, if God calls you to do it, you're ready to show that God calls you, you don't have to pay attention to what anybody is saying. Okay? You don't have to listen to what people are going to say because the enemy is going to go through people to discourage you. To stop you from what you are doing. And we have to fight. And if, 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 to be honest with you, if you don't have temptations, you are not being persecuted, then you haven't done anything yet. You haven't done anything yet. Everybody just loving on you, cheering you up, and all that stuff. Then you're not doing anything in the kingdom. But once you are making impact in God's kingdom and, 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 and releasing people from the kingdom of hell, the devil is going to come after you. So be prepared for war. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against prince and politics and power. So be, 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 be ready. Do not give up. Don't give up on what God called you to do. All right? Don't give up. All right? They've been persecuted for so then He went down in chapter 7, verse, in Acts chapter 7, verse 51 to 53. He said, you stubborn people, you, you, you are hurting our hearts and death to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's why your ancestors did, and so you, name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. They even killed the one who predicted the coming of the righteous one, the Messiah, who you betray and murder. You deliberately disobey God's law, even though you receive him, in, uh, um, even though you receive it from the hands of the angels. So they were persecuting him. He told them, he said, your, 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 who, 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 which prophet that came that did not persecute? John the Baptist that came that came to announce the Messiah, they caught the neck. They did this, they did, they did, they persecuted every prophet. So they went up for me and you. It's still going on. And they didn't rest. They went and killed Stephen. They stoned him to death. Because he was saying the truth. Trying to redeem them, trying to revive them, so trying to bring salvation to them. And when he was dying, he said, Lord, don't charge them with sin. And with that, he died. He forgave them. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be discouraged. Okay? You don't have to be discouraged about what everybody else is saying. Oh, you're not doing the right thing. You know, you're doing this. They're going to, there, there will be persecution. There will be persecution. So don't, don't, don't even worry about that. You know? So then it brought me to this. Jesus said that if the world hates you, John, uh, uh, John 15, 18 to 21. 
He said, if the war hits you, you remember that it hit me first? The world who love you as one of its own if you belong to it. For you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world. So it hits you. Do not remember what I told do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than his master. We are the slaves. We are not greater than our master Jesus because he went through worse things. The world will hate you. Once you decide to do the things of God, you become an enemy to the world. Because you, you are separate from them. You don't, you don't think like them. You don't talk like them. They get mad. You're going to lose friends. You're even going to lose some of their members. All right? So you just have to, I just want to encourage somebody this morning. He said, do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than his master. Since they persecuted me naturally, they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would have listened to you. They, they, they will do all this to you because of me. But they have rejected the one who sent me. Yes. He said they have done all of this. They have done all of this because of him. They will do all of this because of us. I mean, of him. They're going to persecute. They're going to reject us. They're going to call us names. They're going to say all kinds of things. They're going to speak all kinds of stuff against you. But do not be discouraged. You're going to lose friends. Jesus had a bunch of people around him. When he started his ministry, everybody was coming each year, coming to a year. When he started going to the court, the truth, they all disappeared. He only had 12 people, 12, his, his 12 disciples. And the 12 changed the whole world. So you don't need a whole group. You did not come for everybody. You did not come to speak to everybody. You did not come to change everybody's life. God sent you to a special group of people. And those people are going to listen to you and they're going to appreciate what you're telling them. So if anybody else out there is telling that you're not doing the right thing, you're not, you, you this, you that, they try to criticize you, they're not complimenting you, you don't have to be discouraged to stop doing what God called you to do because it's not for them. That's why they don't cherish it. That's why they don't believe it. The right people will honor your message and it will make impact in their life. So do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged, all right? So let me go to my last scripture. Um which is Matthew chapter uh, 20, verse 1 to 16. You know, people will ridicule you. People think, oh, you be, you just come into the things of God, and you know, what, you, what do you know? It doesn't matter how long. I, you can come today, and I've been here 10 years. God might use you even greater than he used me. We all are, because he's, he's looking. He said that the harvest, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. And we are the laborers. He's looking for people, you the vessels, to come and, and proclaim his good news. But people are so busy doing other things. So don't be discouraged that, oh, you know, the other bishop or pope, you know, he started 20 years ago. So I have to, I, I mean, I'm not saying that you cannot submit and, and respect your pastor or, or other people in the law. But do not, some people are just there to bring you down, try to make you feel like whatever you're doing is not right. So do not encourage that. Just look up to God. Because if you know you can fake that and God sent you to do this work, the enemy is going to come through people that are very close to you, people that, that you that you take advice from, that you believe, that you trust. He's going to go through. You have to pray for discernment. Because if you don't pray for discernment, you're going to be distracted. All right? So now he's talking about this parable of the vineyard. He said, uh, it's, I'm reading from verse 20, I mean chapter 20, verse 1 to 16. Sorry if I'm talking fast. You know, sometimes when I get these messages, and then uh, I get so excited, and then I, I cannot just contain it. You know, I just want to get it out. I just want to get it out. So for the kingdom of heaven is like the land owner who went early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and send them out to work. At 9 o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing so he hired them telling them he will pay them whatever was right at the end of the day so they went to work in the vineyard at noon and again at at three o'clock they did the same thing at five o'clock that afternoon he was in town again he saw some more people standing around and he asked why have you haven't you been working wow this is so profound this is so profound he's looking for people He's looking for you that vessels. He's going around. He's looking for prostitutes. He's looking for drug dealers. 
He's looking for homosexual. He's looking for whatever sin you have caused. He's looking for you. Just come to him and he will use you. Don't let people go, oh, you used to be this, you used to smoke, you used to drink, you used to that. That was your all you. Now you have been born in Christ and you are brand new. So do not let anybody to criticize you that you used to be. You are used to be, it's not your title, you are not labeled to that. You are a brand new creature. So just hang on to God. Just avail yourself to Him and see what He's going to do for you. He's going to use you magically. He was going around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, picking up people that were standing on the street, not doing anything idle. He picked them up and told them to work. Okay? So he asked them, why haven't you been working? They, they replied, because no one hired us. Nobody cared for them. Nobody cared for the prostitutes. Everybody passing. They're so holy. They're so perfect. They don't want to talk to the beggars. Nobody want to associate themselves with homosexuals. You live in a, in a community. I got, I got a gay partner right uh, uh, on, my, on the next street. I pray for them every morning. That the Holy Spirit will convince them that they will change because they are under a spell. They are under a certain kind of spirit that is using them and trying to make them think that they are doing the right thing. But you think I don't love them? I love them with the love of God. It's just a spirit that is controlling them. So you cannot despise those people. You cannot despise drug addicts. Love on them. You don't know what they are going through. Pray for them. The only thing you can do is to pray for them. And help them and bring them into the kingdom of God. Okay? They, they, they said nobody, nobody called them to work. They said nobody, everybody perfect. Nobody even want no drug addict to associate with their children. Nobody even want no person to associate with their daughter. Are you praying for her? Are you praying her into the kingdom of God? Or you just despise her? Okay, and that's what he's saying here. I didn't even plan on this. Oh my God, the Holy Spirit is so good. I didn't even plan on saying this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I have built myself to you every day, God. I said, you speak through me. Speak through me. You, you call me to do this work. I crucify my flesh. I do not want to do anything for my flesh. All I want to do is what you did. Jesus said, I, I do whatever, everything I see my father do. I'm not going to do anything for my flesh. I do what my father called me to do. Purify my heart, love, my emotions, my desires. Sanctify my desires. This is not because of fame or popularity. This is a cry of the heart of God. And I put myself with him to cry to, 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 to bring mankind to the kingdom of God. God is waiting for us. He wants to have a relationship with us. We're just so basic doing all these mundane things that's not going to take us anywhere. So now in chapter 7, he said, They replied, Because no one hired us. The others in the vineyard, the others in the, in the vineyard. So that evening he told the four men to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the workers first. Wow. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a four days wage. That's the juicy part of this scripture. Each of them received the same wage. All right. So um, when they when those hired at five o'clock were paid, each of them received a four days wage. When those higher first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more, receive more. But they too were paid at the day's wage. When, when they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour to the owner. I mean, yes, and, and, you, and yet you pay them just as much as you pay us. Who worked all day in the scorching heat? He answered. One of them, or he, he answered one of them. Friend, I have been unfair. That was the owner, the land, the land owner saying this now. He said, Friend, I have been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last will become the first. And those who are first will become the last. Please read this. Matthew chapter 20 verse um, 1 to 16. You can read the whole 20 and get the whole story. Because of time, I'm not going to do it. 
So he pay each other equal and they got mad. It's like, it's like somebody got born again, 1940. And somebody got born again, 2018 on the deathbed. They still gonna sit at the right hand of God the Father. It doesn't matter how long. So don't let nobody come to bring you down and tell you that, oh, you just started the things of God. God is looking for your willingness. He's looking for your heart. It does not matter how long you started to serve him. It doesn't matter whether you came yesterday and the other person came 10 years ago. If you avail yourself and discipline yourself and spend time with God and build a relationship with him, he's going to use you mightily. You might even, he might even use you more than that person who was there 20 years ago. Because maybe that person who was there 20 years ago doing stuff for their own thing. Because a lot of them now, they're just building churches, building more members. They're not even seeking souls. They're not preaching the truth anymore. Because they want members. They want followers. They want appease people. They want to tell people what they want to hear. They don't want to preach about sin. They don't want to preach about adultery. People just go and commit adultery and, 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 and divorce. And they come to church holding hands and the pastor's not saying anything. Nobody preach about divorce anymore. So some of us who come here and say it, they get mad with us and tell us blah, blah, blah. I will teach whatever God called me to do. I am not under nobody. Uh, a mouthpiece. I am. I am honored. I am honored God, and He sent me, and I will teach the truth. If you don't want to listen to me, do not click on my channel. Those who call to listen, God will align the right people to come and listen. So I'm just encouraging somebody today. Read chapter twenty, verse one to sixteen, Matthew. He said, "Those who are last will become the first. Don't be intimidated by nobody. Not because they've been Christian for twenty, fifty years." And you started this year preaching. God will use it just and build yourself to Him. Make yourself available. Spend time with Him. I wake up every morning 3 a.m. I want to hear from God. I stay there until 5 for the fast to get my kids ready for school. I dedicate my time to fasting and praying because I want to hear from God. God spoke to Moses. He spoke to Daniel. He spoke to He can speak to you. You don't have to echo anybody. God can speak to you. He wants you to leave a legacy. He wants to have a relationship with everybody. So don't feel discouraged. Don't feel intimidated by anybody. All right? Don't feel intimidated. He said, um, he said everything we went through, he will go through. He was persecuted, and we will be persecuted even more. Worst things will happen to also be prepared. Coming to don't say, oh, I, I used to be in the war, everything was okay, and now I tried to serve God, everything just coming against me. If everything not coming against you, that means you're not doing nothing. Everything. <laughs> People sometimes they, they repossess your cars, your houses, they will take it away from you. The enemy, all of that is distraction because he knows the trouble you're about to cause in his kingdom. So he wants to bring all those problems to you. Your husband who's so loving will start to hate you. Will start to tell you all kinds of things that he never told you before. Your children will become so rebellious against you. No man is greater than a slave. That means than a master. The slave is not greater than his master. Jesus went through and we're going to go through one. So be prepared. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep doing what you do. You don't need, you don't need no cherry squad. They don't, they don't appreciate you. Nobody don't. Uh, 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 accomplish what you're doing. I mean, appreciate what you're doing. They don't compliment you. God sees your heart. He's going to reward you. You're not doing it for men. Do not look for applause for men. Go look to God. God is the one sees your heart. He sees your diligence. He sees your faithfulness. He's going to reward you. You're not doing this for men. Just keep listening to God. I was encouraged by this message, so I didn't want to keep it to myself because I know a lot of new believers who are teaching now Doing things because Facebook has given us a, a free platform. Praise God for that. Everybody uses Facebook for different reasons. But he, he gave us a free platform to come and teach. To help people. So do not feel discouraged. Whether you, you, you don't know how to speak good English. Your my Liberian accent is very unique. Some people wish they could speak like me. I, that's that what, that the lies the devil used to tell me. He used to intimidate them by my accent. Oh, I don't know how to speak that. I don't know how to speak. Blessed are those who know how to speak the American English. I'm a Liberian, born Liberian, naturalized American citizen. 
But my accent is unique and precious in the eyes of God. And be, with this accent, God is going to use this accent to reach the world. The people that would that he that's supposed to understand me, the people that's supposed to, to, to be impacted by his message through me, they're going to understand it. I don't have to fix anything. I don't have to be like anybody. I don't have to speak whatever way. I should just speak clear. All right? So don't be intimidated by nothing. The devil bring all those lies. He bring all those lies. You don't have to dress like all designers in the comments. Why do you be clean and come on the on the platform? Can't give you a message. Stop only back. I'm not ready yet. Oh, I got it all over. Look at my life. It's been so blurry. I, I, I've been living in God for a good life, for a good life in it. But I cannot allow the light to stop me from doing what God called me to do. I will use the light that I have. And people were here, they're not, they're nobody, I mean, he's not sitting in the voice from my face or whatever. The, my voice, the, the message, whatever light I have, I'm going to use it. Whatever place I don't have a studio, I don't have nothing, I sit in my dining room, I say whatever. I'm going to use, utilize those things, the resource that he gave me for now. And as time goes by, everything will fall in place. So do not hold back. Don't be waiting. What are you waiting for? Do you know when you're going to die? Oh, people are going to talk for me. I'm ready here. I'm got all the clothes to wear on this. The other person has got this. No, 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 no. Go. Wear your clothes. Wear your, just wear your little, nice little top. All right? You don't even have to polish your nails. Make your hair nice. You know, you, you, don't, you don't, don't let anything to hinder you. Just go. God is going to speak through you. He's looking for you, the vessels. He wants to, he got too many things. Too many people are dying. Too many people are living in lies. And you want us to go out there to rescue them. And you're waiting for clothes, you're waiting for light, you're waiting for death. Do you know that you don't you don't know God is your provider? Don't you think He can provide you a light? Don't you think that He can provide you a studio? Stop uh, uh, making uh, uh, these crazy things to hold you down and stop it from the work God for you to do or people. Alright? So uh, let me let me close now because I'm going to share all day. So let's encourage each other. Let's let's compliment each other, believers. Let's stop tearing each other down. If you want to correct your sister or your brother, correct them in love. Don't go and sit and gossip about them that they're not doing the right thing, they're not doing this, and you want to come pretend, you know, because of your own uh, 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 evil motive, you want to destroy them, the devil, you're allowing the devil to use you. Let's not tear each other apart. Okay, because we are all after our father's business. At the end of the day, we all are serving God. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing it for me for pop. I don't have so many friends. I'm not doing it for popularity. I'm doing it because of God. Because I promise him that I will serve him. I'm doing it because of the love I have for God. And he honors that. And he's gonna equip me. He don't he don't he don't deal with the qualify, he qualified the call. When you are, when he call you, he will qualify you. He will give you everything that you need to carry on his his message. All right, so thank you guys for joining. Thank you for sharing. Share this message. Maybe you might have somebody that is going through some discouragement and discontentment about you know what God called them to do, and they are in, they're very indecisive. They are what people are gonna say. Share this message a uh, message with them. To encourage them, share this message. You know. Let's get together as believers. Let's compliment one another. Let's love one another. Let's not tear one another apart. Is there a heart that stand uh, that, 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 that sin against itself does not stand? We are Christians. Let's love one, one another. We, have, we share the same Father. We are all sisters and brothers. Let's love one another. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Let me just close it with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful message. I thank you, Lord, for speaking through me. I give you all the glory. I pray that somebody will be rescued today from this message. Somebody will be healed. Somebody will be encouraged from this message, oh God. Let your will be done. I seal this message out with the blood of Jesus. Let it reach those people that it's supposed to reach. And I bless you. And I avail myself more to you daily, Lord. I say, you take control of me. Kill my flesh. Shut my mouth. You speak through me to your people. Speak through me. I am a yielded vessel. Use me, oh God. I'm available. Use me, Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Have a blessed day, guys. Love you all.
Thanks for joining Julia. Love you, Sissy. Love you, love you, Julia. Mm -hmm. <sighs>